Dear students, in the electronics, unit 1 semiconductor rectifiers and DC power supplies. In the unit, first topic discuss that is the preliminaries of rectification. Rectification is the diode in the use of the diode use of the construct electronic device and rectifier. The diode in the property is the diode. The diode it is also known as a PN junction. It has two parts. One is the anode part and the other one is the cathode part. When a PN junction is formed, a potential barrier is established at the junction. So this potential barrier uh, it does not allow any further movement of holes and electrons through the junction. That is the potential barrier created in the original PN junction. Le, further movement of electrons and holes are not possible. In order to uh, conduct current through the PN junction diode, we have to uh, connect an external supply. An external battery we have to connect. The battery, uh, suppose it is a DC battery, the voltage variation and along with the time will be like this. That is as time varies, there is no change in the voltage. Voltage remains as a constant. This is a case of a DC source. Usually battery. Battery is a DC source. There is no variation in the voltage with respect to time. So this battery you can connect. The symbol for a battery is like this. This is the positive terminal of the battery and this is the negative terminal of the battery. A battery we can connect in order to overcome this potential barrier. Uh, and this battery you can connect in two different manner. One is the forward biasing. Forward biasing manner. In this case, we are connecting the battery to the diode like this. That is the positive terminal of the battery is connected to the anode part. And negative of the battery is connected to the cathode part. In this case, uh, we have seen that the uh, height of the potential barrier decreases and there is an easy flow of current easy flow of current through the diode occurs if current flows easily then resistance in this case it is uh, very low resistance is very low and it is of the order of some 25 ohms like that and we usually represent that diode resistance by the symbol rf that is the forward diode resistance uh, in practical case we can neglect this value is very small so we can neglect this value and the second case is the reverse biasing in the case of reverse biasing we are connecting this diode like this that is negative terminal of the battery is connected to the anode and positive terminal of the battery is connected to the cathode so in this case we have seen that the height of the potential barrier increases and because of that uh, there is practically no current flow through the diode takes place no current flow through the diode and so in this case resistance is very high so these are the two cases of biasing in the case of a uh, diode pn junction diode now uh, in this case uh, suppose we are uh, the current is flowing through this current, uh, this uh, PN junction diode. Since the resistance here is very low, the voltage drop across the diode, diode voltage drop across will be very low because resistance in this case it is very low. So the drop voltage drop across this uh, diode will be very low. But in this case, what happens is R is very high. R is very high. So what happens? R is very high means the drop across the volt, uh, diode that is I into R it is very high. So there is a chance of the uh, of this diode to break down. So uh, diode has a special characteristic voltage that is known as the peak inverse voltage that is the peak inverse voltage PIV. is the maximum reverse voltage maximum reverse voltage that a diode can withstand 
So in this case, uh, the maximum, whatever is the voltage applied here, since there is no electronic component in the circuit, whatever is the voltage applied here, that will apl uh, that will be come across this diode. So what happens? Uh, all of the potential applied here will be across the diode. So we have to know about the reverse voltage, peak inverse uh, voltage of this diode, uh, in order to avoid the diode to uh, to avoid it from the breakdown to uh, damage. So what happens? We have to know. We have to have a uh, clear idea of the peak inverse voltage of a diode if it is coming in the reverse biased manner. There is no such a uh, case occurs in the case of forward biasing because uh, it acts as uh, just as a conductor in this case. There is a very low resistance. Easy path of current takes place through the uh, diode. Now we can come to the case of rectification. Rectification. In, a sim in the simplest case, we can call, say it as the conversion of an AC into DC. Usually an AC supply, we are representing it in the uh, diagrammatic manner like this. Here, uh, along the x-axis, we are representing the time and the, along the y-axis, we can represent either voltage or current. The both the variations of voltage and current are in the same manner. The values will be some di uh, difference will be there. Now, uh, this uh, AC voltage contains positive variations and uh, negative variations and the period of this AC is 2 pi from 0 to 2 pi the variation we can say it is positive and from pi to 2 pi the variation is negative. Now uh, in order to convert an AC into DC we, we can use the property of diode. So first of all suppose we are using a single diode and by using this circuit you can design a rectifier circuit and that rectifier circuit will be like this. It is known as a half wave rectifier. Half wave rectifier. Now we can discuss the working of this half wave rectifier. So what happens here? So this is the AC supply and this we call it as the load resistance. Load resistance. Along this load resistance, we are taking the output voltage. This AC supply, which we have applied in the input, so it is also known as the input supply. Now what happens? Uh, this uh, input AC has positive half cycle and a negative half cycle. Suppose uh, at this terminal, the polarity is positive. So what happens? This end will be negative. And the diode, at the diode, we will get positive voltage. At the anode part, we will get the positive voltage and the cathode part, we will get the negative voltage. So during this time, the diode contacts and the output, we can represent like this. So from 0 to pi region, it will be like this. It will contact easily. Now, uh, after uh, reaching this particular phase part or after a particular time interval, uh, the polarity suddenly changes like this. This end becomes negative and this end becomes positive. So uh, the polarity at the diode also changes. So here this negative is connected to the anode and the positive is connected to the cathode. So the diode is in the reverse biased manner. So practically there is no current flowing through the res uh, load resistance. And suppose we uh, take the current across the or the voltage across the load resistance, there is no practical voltage or current across the external load resistance. So when the cycle repeats, so what happens? This uh, type of waveform gets uh, repeated. Now, uh, since uh, this diode conducts only during one of the half cycles of the input AC, so this is known as a half a rectifier. So we have uh, we, uh, we don't have this part in our syllabus. So we we have we are dealing with the next type of the uh, rectifier that is a full wave rectifier. Full wave rectifier. And this half wave rectifier has a lot of disadvantages because only uh, one of the half cycles of the input AC is used here, and we are getting only output for uh, during uh, e e uh, this each half cycles only. So we are modifying the circuit in order to obtain the output during the two half cycles. So for that we have to use two diodes and we have two types of full wave rectifiers. One is the sender tapped full wave rectifier. Sender tapped full wave rectifier.
this circuit you can we are using two diodes we are using two diodes connected like this now we need an ac supply and that ac supplies is is given to the primary primary this is a primary of a transformer and this is a secondary of a transformer this is the ac supply then air connecting this lead to here this is a center trapped one so one more new lead is there and that we have grounded and from this point common point we have connected the load resistance and the end of this load resistance is connected to the center trapper. that is the meaning of this uh, ground terminal now next we can discuss the working of this circuit so since this is an ac supply at a particular instant of time this end becomes positive and this end becomes negative so we can deal with the two diodes what happens during these half cycles of the input ac is that diode d1 in the case of diode D1, these are uh, anode is connected to positive and cathode is connected to the negative part. So this diode D1 conducts, D1 conducts. This is our input AC. We can represent like this. And suppose we represent in the output voltage like this. This is our out input and this is our output. So, during the first half cycle of the input AC, D1 diode will conduct and D2 is reverse biased. That is anode here connected to the negative lead. So, this diode D1 conducts and D2 does not conduct. Does not conduct. So, a current flows through this external load resistance. And what is the direction of this current through the external load resistance? The current flow is always from the positive lead of the battery to the negative or from the positive lead to the negative lead. So the current flows along D1, then comes here, then flows through RL, then reaches this point, then comes here and repeats this path. Because there is no current flow um, through the diode, this is a high resistance path. Current, current does not take the high resistance path. So the direction of the current you can mark like this. It is from the top to the bottom. Now, so because of that, we will get an output like this. It is a, in the same manner as that of the input part. Now, the next instant of time, this polarity of the leads changes. So what happens? This D1, uh, the anode of the D1, uh, we get negative polarity and the, uh, the anode of the D2, we will get a positive polarity. So this uh, D1 is in the reverse bias case manner and D2 is in the forward bias manner. So during the ne next half cycle, D2 will conduct and D1 will not conduct. This is the case. The case is reverses. So uh, what happens here? The current condition, we are taking the output across RL. So we can know, we can find out the direction of the current through RL. So it is from positive lead, from starting from here. Then it comes here. This is a high resistance path. It does not take this path. Then this current will flow along RL in the same direction as in the earlier case. And this uh, uh, closed path completes a closed path. So again, the current through the uh, load resistance is in the same manner. So we can represent like this. So uh, this type of a wave, we are getting a wave like this in the output. So it is known as a full wave rectifier. Okay, then this full wave rectifier, um, we can uh, study the case of full wave rectifier in a detailed manner. So what happens here is uh, this D1, at some instant of time D1 conducts and D2 comes in the reverse biased manner. And at some instant of time D1 comes in the reverse biased manner and D2 is forward biased. So uh, there is a chance of the two diodes to become reverse biased in, in the reverse biased case. So we have to take the case of the peak inverse voltage. That is, suppose we have a voltage VP here. That is the voltage between uh, one of the terminal and the center top of the transformer is VP. And from here also there will be VP because it is the center part of the transformer. So 
uh, at a particular instant of time this voltage will come across along a diode this voltage will come across this diode and this voltage will come across this diode so the two diodes attains a maximum value of vp during the reverse biased case so in order to avoid the diodes from the breakdown so we have to take the peak inverse voltage of these two diodes such that peak inverse voltage of the diode is greater than vp so that is a per, an important case in the case of the important result in the case of or important factor which we have to note in the case of center tapped full wave rectifier that is the diode which we have considered should have a peak inverse voltage which is greater than the vp that vp is nothing but the voltage between one of the terminal and the center tap of the transformer used in the center tapped full wave rectifier now the uh, suppose we are analyzing this circuit we can say that it is a simple circuit which uses only two diodes and a single resistance and uh, uh, another uh, defect which we can say is that uh, it uses uh, we need a, a uh, we can use only a center tapped transformer in this case otherwise the circuit will not work so uh, in order to avoid sometimes uh, this voltage there will be some voltage difference between the upper part and lower part so there will be some uh, variation in the nature of the output waveform so in order to avoid that we are modifying the circuit and we are uh, we are designing another type of circuit that is known as a bridge rectifier bridge rectifier in the case of bridge rectifier we are using four diodes and these diodes we are connecting like this in a bridge manner now we are connecting like this it is connected in a bridge manner that is four diodes are formed that is d1 here d2 here d3 here and d4 here are connected in such a manner that uh, this d1 and d3 opposite arms have the diodes connected in the same manner and we are connecting it to an input AC through a transformer. AC supply here. Then we are taking a transformer. Transformer primary we have. Then we have the secondary is taken. Secondary terminal we have. Then we are connecting the external load resistance here external load resistance is connected here rl then we can name the diodes as d1 d2 d3 d4 etc now as in the earlier case we can uh, discuss the working of this bridge rectifier so at a particular instant of time suppose we take the this end as positive at a positive polarity then this end will be at the negative polarity now we can consider the case of four diodes what happens to the case of D1? D1, in this case, D1 is forward biased. Forward biased. Then, uh, the case of D2, D2 is, uh, it is connected, anode is connected to negative, so it is reverse biased. Then, for D3, it is, negative is connected to cathode, so it is forward biased. Then, for D4, it is a positive is connected to cathode, so it is reverse biased. So, at a time, at this instant of time, D1 contains and D3 contains. So, we can consider the path of the path of the circuit like this. Starting from positive terminal, the current flows through D1 and reaches this uh, common point. Then, on reaching this point, it selects the easy path that is through RL. Then, these two points are the same. Then, reaches here. Then, on reaching this point, it selects uh, this path d3 path d4 is in the reverse biased condition so the complete uh, path closes so the current flow along the external load resistance will be like this now uh, if we represent the uh, output and input waveforms this is the input waveform and uh, the output waveform for the positive half cycle we will get the uh, exact same waveform in the output world also now during the uh, second half cycle what happens the lead polarity changes and this end becomes negative and this end becomes positive 
when this n becomes negative uh, suppose we take the case of d1 d1 is uh, here anode 2 negative so it is reverse biased then here positive to d2 so uh, anode so it is d2 is forward biased then what happens to d3 d3 positive to cathode so it is d3 is reverse biased then what about d4 d4 negative to cathode so it is uh, forward biased so in this case d2 is forward biased and d4 is forward biased so other two diodes is in the reverse biased case so what happens to the flow of current current starts from here it selects the easy path so along d2 then reaches here this is a high resistance path so select this path then reaches here and reaches this point it selects this path so external current is along this in the load resistance is in the same end so we will get the output in the uh, it is the uh, wave nature is the same but it is in the variation is in like this it is where it is only in the positive manner so this type of a waveform we will get in the output so it is known as a full wave rectifier now in this case we have to take the uh, case of peak inverse voltage so here uh, at a time d1 and d3 becomes reverse bias and at a certain other instant of time d2 and d4 uh, becomes reverse bias so suppose vp is the voltage between these two terminals of the uh, transformer at a time what happens uh, the maximum voltage that is obtained at a diode it will be uh, vp so uh, we have to select diodes which have a peak inverse of voltage of the order of which is greater than vp that is a special case here here it is a uh, peak inverse voltage is uh, here you have to take uh, uh, this time uh, if it is vp here there is a slight modification here here only we have considered this voltage so two times vp here here it should be peak inverse voltage should be greater than 2 vp and here it is peak inverse voltage is greater than vp but there is a difference between this vp and this vp this vp is the voltage between two terminals and here the voltage is between a single terminal and the center tapped transformer now the advantage of this circuit is that it uses uh, four diodes and we, we does not need a center tap transformer you can use a common transformer here then uh, peak inverse voltage the rating is very will be low here it is 2 vp so here it is vp so in this case rating is low in the case of bridge rectifier we can use a low rating and uh, diodes in this case of half a rectifier then another factor which you have to note in this case is that the about the output frequency the output frequency frequency is the number of repetitions uh, in a particular cycle so here the, this is the repetition part of the uh, output waveform so whenever this wave repeats one time this wave repeats two times so frequency will be that of the two times input frequency so these are the points which we have to note in the case of uh, rectifiers we have three types of rectifiers half air rectifier full wave rectifier and bridge rectifier half air rectifier it contains only for the one of the half cycle and the, the output will be very low so uh, the practically with the efficiency of this circuit will be uh, there is a tendency for the efficiency to reduce in this case in this case it contains for both the half cycle so the, uh, the efficiency will be very high in these two cases and certain advantages are there for full wave rectifier and certain other advantages are for bridge rectifier and certain disadvantages that disadvantage has been uh, rectified in the case of bridge rectifier so uh, that is, that is uh, all about this rectification okay